today I'm going to take you through replacing the tail motor. Uh, these tail motors go bad in these V912s. Um, they're a little bit cantankerous to replace. You have to do a little bit of soldering. You need a uh, pencil solder and iron, some solder, magnifying glass, and a magnetic screwdriver. And patience, 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 patience. So let's proceed. I'll show you how to do this. And if you guys find some shortcuts, do it your way. It's not an issue. This is just the way I do it. Stay tuned. We're going to try to remove the tail motor here to replace it. Now, a lot of people have problems with this. It's a little, um, I don't want to say difficult, but just kind of work with it. Um, this screw. This screw comes out, the tail, the piece that holds the tail comes off, and you can get to um, this screw, this screw, and you take this screws out. So basically you need to take all the screws out. There's a screw on the other side here that has to come out also. And once you get them off, you can just take a little screwdriver in here in the back side and pry this cover. You just pry this cover and it comes off. Pull the wires a little bit and the cover comes out around. You need a small screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, which I have. Um, if you can't see the best, a magnifying glass will work. I have one of them. You will need a pencil, solder and iron, a small wattage pencil solder and it's the side of the wires on the motor and of course some solder to do the job it's not it's not a hard job it just takes a little bit of patience you know getting these screws out and get everything apart um, so let's proceed okay what I do first is take this screw out tail holder. I always call it a tail holder, but it keeps uh, blades from hitting stuff when it takes off. I kind of take everything off to get that out of the road. I have a magnetic tray. I put every, all the screws in so the screws do not float away. And then I take a flat part of screwdriver and I just pry underneath that plastic cover there and I get that cover a little pull and see it came loose. It, uh, it's pretty simple. You can go back to your Phillips. Take this out. Now that's a smaller screw. So just be careful you don't lose that guy. I got really big fingers so. But that's a real small one so that's a different size. The other ones are about basically the same size. And you can come up here and you can get this one to come out. Put him over here and take him out. You can see it's starting to come apart. There is one screw. On the opposite side, this guy here, take him out. This is just how I do it. If you find a shortcut or a better way, by gosh, do it. This is just how I do it. You get that apart, and then the tail should pull apart in two pieces. And just sit this guy off to the side because you don't want to lose him. And then you can see the tail in two pieces. You want to pull this cover, get yourself some slack on these wires, pull this cover up and around. And once it comes around, you can get to the wires and unsolder them. Once you unsolder them, there's two tiny screws on either side of the motor gear here. You have to take them out to pull the motor out. So let's get the soldering iron on them, see about getting them suckers unsoldered see how we do. There 
But if you want to take the screws out first, if that's easier for you. Um, doesn't really matter. Whatever's easier for you. It's not a lot of room to work here. These wires are really, really tight. I take the magnifying glass and look what side what is. You can't get the black and the positive mixed up. You can see that black pulled right off of there real easy. And I'll get the red, which is the hot. See how quick that pulled off there. And then turn him over and get your other two screws out there, Phillips, and a relatively very, very tiny screws. Back that one out. Just watch you don't lose it. Back that one out. That one I magnify. I always uh, magnetize whatever I'm working with because I don't want to lose it. These screws, as you see, are very, very tiny. I'm in a magnetic tray. And that's the motor. And now we'll go to soldering the wires on the new motor. Okay, what you want to do next, once I got the motor unsoldered, is you want to tin these wires. Because you're going to put them back on a new motor. And it's nice if you have help, if somebody can hold these. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes you don't. I'm going to try it without help. We'll see how it goes. Soldering left-handed is not my biggest suit. That looks like it took pretty good. So we got to do the same to the black. Pull the black up out of that cage. This isn't the first time I changed this motor. So I've uh, went through a couple tail motors. We'll tame this black up a little bit here. see how he does getting him on there. Take a look at him with the magnifying glass. I like to use a magnifying glass to check everything to make sure it's on there. And it is. It's on there really good. Now, you, have to, you just have to put it back together in reverse order. You have to get your tiny screws in there and get your cage around. It's a little bit, you just got to be patient, very patient with it because it is not a lot of room to work. That's the whole issue with this, um, with this getting this around, wiggling this around. May have done s It's tight, but it will go. Might be easier to 
screw the new motor, the new motor in there and then solder your wires. Whatever's easier for you. And snap the cage back on. The holes practically line up in there. Okay, now comes the fun part, the tiny, the teeny tiny screws. You can see that screw is very, very tiny. Motor spins free. Okay, attempting to put this tiny screw in here, the other side of the motor. Make sure they're tight, but don't over tighten them. And that's it, the motor's in there and it's spinning free. So the rest of it is putting everything back together. In the same order you took it apart. Kind of. So we'll get the other half of the tail here. Tail blade. Take the one, inspect it, and it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of grease on here from the factory, and that's okay. And then it snaps back together and there's a hole in the tail that there you hear it snap there's a hole in the tail this screw has to go in and you just kind of got to wiggle it around to you find it. Got this screw in once this screws in you can kind of turn this tail to align this screw. There's a hole in the tail for the screw on this side and you just got to kind of wiggle it around till you find the hole and get it in. But it has to be in because it keeps the whole tail section from moving. So you definitely have to get that in there. Put your bottom screw in. Sure, they're snug. And your back screw, which is a little bit smaller. Snug him down. So I got one. Two, three, four screws. One, there's only one on that side. Now I'll put the piece in that holds the tail up. And they're pretty long screws. They're actually the simplest to get in and out. At least for my tiny fingers. Or, or should I say fat fingers. They're pretty easy to get in. I use a stock motor. Um, I don't have the tail motors going out that often, so I've been using the stock. Uh, I guess the MJX F45 would probably fit also, but I use I use the stock. And you can see it's pretty well back together. It's got the cage on it. Everything's tight. Everything moves. The motor. So we're ready to try to test run this baby. Okay, I'm going to put the battery in this now that the tail motor's in it. And I'm going to kind of test it to make sure she works. Switch it on here. Let her bind. Pull her up, pull her nice and tight. There she goes. Oh yeah. 
just floating in my hand. You see the tail works real well. So that's how you replace the tail motor. If you have any questions, you can certainly get up with me here. Don't forget to friend me on Tailboom Terry on Facebook and subscribe to my channel if you have more videos in the future. Happy flying, guys! Thank you.